Hey class, if you're looking at uh, the screen while I, uh, for this particular podcast and the one that follows, what you see is a picture of Adolf Hitler and it's the uh, the occasion of him uh, going before the Reichstag in, in Germany and declaring war on the United States on December, uh, December 11th, 1941, just four days after Pearl Harbor. And this is one of the key dates, uh, not only in the history of World War II, but arguably in the, the history of the world. Um, so what had happened actually in the previous week, uh, on December 5th, the Soviets, uh, remember, they had brought their troops uh, from Siberia. Uh, Stalin had gotten the word uh, from his spy in Tokyo that the Japanese were not going to invade Siberia, and he decided to believe his spy this time. So the, uh, the Soviet Union had uh, brought its divisions from Siberia to Moscow, and on December 5th, launched a counterattack against the German army that was just about five miles from the Kremlin, uh, which threw the German army over 100 miles back. Now, the German army is not defeated by this uh, counterattack, uh, but at least it's knocked back from uh, Moscow over 100 miles, which is very, very significant. Um, December 7th, 1941, uh, Pearl Harbor is bombed by the Japanese. Uh, thus bringing the U.S. into the war against Japan. But it's not until December 11th, 1941, that Hitler declares war on the United States. Uh, so this, this period of, de of December uh, of 1941 is one of the really key uh, periods in World War II. It ranks with May of 1940, which uh, is the period in which you might remember that Churchill managed to keep, uh, he maneuvered around Halifax and he managed to keep uh, uh, Great Britain in the war against Germany, even though uh, from maybe a logical point of view, uh, Great Britain uh, should have surrendered, but Churchill uh, showed great uh, resolve and great character and kept Great Britain into the war, in the war. Um, it ranks with the uh, invasion of the Soviet Union in June of June 22nd, 1941, in which uh, initially Germans made enormous gains, but uh, very, very quickly their offensive, um, I wouldn't say it, it slowed, it went much slower than Hitler anticipated. But let me remind you that by the end of 1941, the Germans are down, but they're not out. They actually come the closest to defeating the Soviet Union the next summer uh, in 1942. Uh, and then after that, the Germans are on the uh, defensive and the Soviets are on the offensive. So, but anyway, things have gone not as quickly, uh, it, nearly as quickly as the Germans anticipated. Winter in the Soviet Union is coming on, especially in front of Moscow. The, the Germans have not prepared for winter. Um, and they have to, to dig in for a very, very tough winter. And of course, in the United States, the big question is, uh, what next after Pearl Harbor? It's a no-brainer that the Japanese uh, had attacked us and that uh, uh, there was an immediate war between the U.S. Um, and Japan. No one questioned that. The question was, is would the U.S. go to war with Germany and vice versa? Would Germany go to war with the United States? And I just want to tell you that it it's not a done deal that the U.S. would go to war with uh, Germany after Pearl Harbor. I, I can't say this enough. Um, it was the Japanese that had bombed um, the United States at Pearl Harbor. It wasn't the Germans. Now, the Germans were obviously allied with the Japanese, but the Germans really had nothing to do with Pearl Harbor at all. And so, there, you still had very, very powerful voices in the United States, uh, especially in the U.S. Congress, who are saying, look, yes, of course we have to go to war with Japan, but let's stay out of the war in Europe. Let's not get involved in a war with Germany. Let's focus on our main enemy, which is Japan. But what the issue was for them, and ultimately the problem was for them, was that Franklin Roosevelt the president uh, of the United States, he always felt that Germany was the major enemy. 
Um, it, it, it wasn't like he felt that Japan wasn't our enemy. Of course, Japan was our enemy. And J of course, Japan had to be defeated. Japan had to be punished uh, for what it had done at, with per, uh, at Pearl Harbor. Uh, also, it, at this in within just a couple of weeks, Japan had captured the U.S. Philippines. Uh, uh, they had captured, even beforehand, they had captured what's now Vietnam. They moved into what is now uh, Indonesia, uh, into Singapore, into Malaysia. The Japanese also had millions of troops in China as well. So Roosevelt, of course, realizes that the Japanese uh, need to be defeated. But he always felt like, from a global geopolitical uh, perspective, that Hitler was the greater enemy than Japan. That he, I think Roosevelt always felt fairly confident that the U.S. forces, our, our forces could defeat the Japanese, whereas Hitler was a tougher nut to crack. And also, I think Roosevelt was also, he was a little bit more European-centered, um, not that he wasn't very, very aware of what was going on in Asia, and he didn't think it was important, especially when the U.S. loses the Philippines, and of course we had been bombed. But he's very aware of Europe. He had traveled in Europe as, as a kid. He was part of that uh, U.S. East Coast elite uh, that's very, very Europe-centric. And when he looked at Hitler, he just saw someone that posed a threat to the United States, really on a hemispheric scale. That if Hitler gained the uh, the continental empire that he uh, was trying to create in Europe, and again, um, don't forget what Hitler's trying to do in Europe is basically create an empire along the lines of what the United States had created uh, between the Atlantic and the Pacific uh, in the 1800s. And I'm not comparing Hitler to the US, anything of the sort, don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm just talking about just in geopolitical terms without the morality. Uh, 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 I'm not saying that Hitler was like us or we were like him. But what he wants to do is he wants to create an analogous empire in Europe, which of course meant the capture of the East, capture of Ukraine for food, capture of the Caucasus and the Black Sea oil. Um, so he wants to create a continental empire and Roosevelt sees that as a profound threat uh, to the future of the United States, that he felt like Hitler uh, at some point if he gains control over Europe, uh, might try to come into the Western Hemisphere as well. So although the Japanese were the ones that bombed us, uh, Roosevelt always thought that Hitler was the greater threat. And Roosevelt uh, had, had talked to Churchill uh, long before Pearl Harbor, and he had promised Churchill that if the U.S. went into war uh, with the uh, with Germany and Japan, which seemed like if it was going to go to the U.S. was going to go into war with one of those countries, it would go into war with the other country, Germany, and Japan. Roosevelt promised Churchill that he would adopt a Germany first strategy. And this is one of the key things I want you to take from this course, that even though Japan uh, bombed us, uh, at Pearl Harbor, Roosevelt always felt like Germany was the major enemy. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail uh, in this podcast, but just a reminder, remember uh, after he had uh, been reelected in 1940, uh, Roosevelt initiated the Lend-Lease Program, which was basically the U.S. is supplying arms uh, to Great Britain, the Soviet Union, China, and ultimately 30 other countries. Um, and what this entailed was is that uh, merchant ships from the U.S. had to sail to England. Um, and by 1940, early 1941, Roosevelt has authorized the U.S. Navy to escort these ships, at least until Iceland, uh, at least to Iceland. And then even in the months before uh, Pearl Harbor, what you have in the North Atlantic is a shooting war between the U.S. Navy and uh, the German Navy, especially German submarines. Uh, even a, a U.S. Navy ship is uh, sunk by a German submarine before the war. So uh, the U.S. is 
is doing everything it can to, to or Roosevelt's doing everything he can to position the U.S. Uh, for a war with uh, Germany, but the U.S. public is still very reluctant to go to war with Europe. Now, Americans enthusiastically embraced the war with Japan, but the world held its breath after Pearl Harbor. What would come next? Would there be a, a declaration of war against Japan? Uh, I'm sorry, against Germany. And the truth is, is that Roosevelt did not have the votes in Congress to declare war against Germany until Hitler declared war on us. He just did not have the votes in Congress. He could have not pushed through a war with Germany unless Hitler had declared war on us first. And this is something that a lot of folks, uh, they just think it's a natural that the U.S. would have gone to war with Germany after Pearl Harbor, but they don't stop to think about who bombed us. So in the next couple of podcasts, I want to talk about what Hitler's thinking, what Roosevelt's thinking, and how it came to be that Hitler made the decision uh, which seems so illogical in retrospect to declare war on the United States.